it is time to start talking about a computer. And I will ask you the million dollar question, okay? What is a computer? Go ahead and think for that for a few seconds, okay? Okay, now go ahead and yell your answer out. I heard hardware and software working together to perform a task, and that's probably what I would have said. I mean, that's actually directly out of the textbook. Okay, nice job. <laughs> but before I try to describe what computers are used for, I thought I'd play you a video from this place called learnfree.org. They made this really nice two-minute video that gives a, a really high-level overview of what a computer is. So let's watch that first. Today, computers are all around us. From desktop computers to smartphones, they are changing the way that we live our lives. But have you ever asked yourself, what exactly is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data. The computer sees data as ones and zeros, but it knows how to combine them into more complex things, such as a photograph, a movie, a website, a game, and much more. Computers use a combination of hardware and software. Hardware is any physical part of the computer, which includes all of the internal components and also the external parts like the monitor and the keyboard. Software is any set of instructions that tells the hardware what to do, such as a web browser, media player, or word processor. Now, when most people say computer, they're talking about a personal computer. This can be a desktop computer or a laptop computer, which has basically the same capabilities, but in a more portable package. Personal computers come in two main styles, PC and Mac. PCs are the most common type. There are many different companies that make them, and they usually come with the Microsoft Windows operating system. Macs, or Macintosh computers, are all made by one company, Apple and they come with the Mac OS X operating system. Computers come in many other shapes and sizes. Mobile phones, tablets, game consoles, and even TVs have built-in computers, although they may not do everything a desktop or a laptop can. There's another type of computer that plays an important role in our lives, servers. A server serves information to other computers on a network. In fact, every time you use the internet, web servers deliver the web pages that you want to see to your computer. Servers are also used in many offices to store and share files. As you can see, there are many different types of computers out there, and they affect our lives in a variety of ways. Computers are everywhere, okay? It's, you know, 10 years ago, you had to like motivate people to understand why computers were important. Now, I think we all get it, right? You know, it's interesting though, uh, the number of computers are not driven by necessarily like laptops and desktops anymore. And they're not even, they are driven by cell phones. You'd say, well, cell phones are, are really what it's all about. But they're actually driven, the count of the number of computers that exist, they're driven by what we call embedded systems. And so, has anybody ever heard the term embedded systems? So, it used to be a big deal where you'd say, I have an embedded system. And what it meant was that the computer that controls the system is embedded within the system. And you're like, that sounds so dumb now. Because it's like, yeah, that's how everything works. It used to be that you would have like a computer, like this was a long, long time ago. You'd have a computer that sits over here, and then you'd have whatever it's controlling over here. So imagine that you have a projector and it's got all these optics and stuff like that. Well, the optics would reside there and then you'd have a, a computer that sat somewhere else that sent all the, the data and controlled the optics, okay? So it was two separate systems. And this could be the same thing with like motor controllers or anything that you can think of, okay? Then what started happening is computers got small enough that they started saying, okay, look, if we're gonna have some motor controller thing, why not put the computer itself all the way inside of the system? Okay, so now you have like this box and it's got a computer at its core and it's controlling all the stuff around it. Okay, so that was embedded system. So now today, everything's like that. 
Okay, so every you know you look at a thermostat over there, that's got a computer in it. Okay, you look at the projector, that's got a computer in it. This thing right here, this dock cam, it's got a computer in it. We all know there's a computer in this, but it's like there's a computer in everything, right? So when you look at something like this, it's got a computer in it. Okay, it's got a little micro microprocessor. It's running software. It's doing whatever it's doing. Okay, and this is an example of an embedded systems. This is not in itself what we call a general purpose computer. Okay, I'm not going to hook a monitor to this and write a document. Okay, or do a spreadsheet. Okay, this isn't even running Windows. Okay, but what's happening is that it is a computer and it is running software in order to do all the things like scan the keys to convert those key presses into information that's then beaconed out on the IR right here and this is this represents the majority of stuff that exists in the world today all right you think about you know home appliances or your car everything has a little tiny computer in there and i say tiny because do you think this that this has an i7 in it do you think that this has 8 gigs of memory in it no, this has something like an 8-bit, what we call microcontroller, which just means that in one chip you put all the stuff that you need for a computer. And when you first think about this, it's kind of foreign because we're used to thinking of computers as like, you know, sticks of DRAM that you can hold in your hand and you plug in and you're like 4 gigs, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, okay, a solid, solid state hard drive that you pick up. Well, the only computers that really need stuff like that are these big general purpose computers that are running like operating systems and, and performing these applications. Most of what computers do today are very simple things. Okay? So if you think of this, this doesn't need to run an operating system. It's just going to run a real simple algorithm that's going to read from the keys, convert those key presses into data that is then pushed over to the IR sensor. So the computer is very small in terms of what it can actually do, the microprocessor, and the memory that it needs. Okay, this does, you know, eight gigs is too much. This might only have like eight K, all right, or 16 K of memory. So it doesn't need hardly anything. And it needs so little memory that that memory doesn't need to be on a DRAM stick. It can actually be on the same integrated circuit that sits inside of here. These computers, you can go to DigiKey and buy a 99 cent microcontroller that comes in like the same package that you guys use for basic gates in your breadboard. Okay? You put that in a breadboard and you're like, how in the hell does this work? It's, it's I.O. It's got like two or three pins that actually interface to the outside world, power and ground, a few programming, and you're off and running. And you're like, what the hell can you do with that? Well, you can do a lot. Okay? You can do an absolute ton of stuff. Now, you go, that's pretty cool. What, what kind of people do that work for a living? What would you guess? Yeah, it's usually kind of a computer engineerish type person. Okay, so if you think about the beginning of time, which was like 1970 when the first microprocessor came out, <laughs> you had electrical engineers. Okay, and you also had computer science. Well, you, you kind of had computer scientists, but they were like mathematicians. So the computer scientist of 1970 was a mathematician, and it was a certain subcategory where they tried to solve things using binary or gates or stuff like that before they even existed. Okay, they kind of existed at the time, but anyway. So what happened is that electrical engineers started building circuitry that looked like a computer. So it was things like microprocessors and memory, and they started making these more sophisticated things, and it started taking off like crazy. Okay, 1980s, you started seeing like Windows, you know, like Macintosh and Windows operating systems start to pop out, and it started taking off, like DOS and then Windows, Windows 95, does remember that? It was in 1997 or something like that. <laughs> but what happened is that the computer itself became such a complex thing that electrical engineers, if you got a degree in electrical engineering, you didn't have enough knowledge about what was happening in a computer to meet the workforce demand. So the workforce started demanding things like, hey, I want an electrical engineer to do the circuitry, the hardware, but all the hardware is now in digital, and if they're going to build hardware that's for digital, that's going to be running software, we need them to have more knowledge about programming and more knowledge about digital hardware. Okay? So what we did is a new degree was formed, which was called computer engineering. And what they did with computer engineering is they took electrical engineering and they stripped out credits to make room for these computer-ish classes. So they stripped out things like power, they stripped out things like physics 3, they stripped out things like you know, controls perhaps, they stripped out a whole bunch of stuff. 
And they said, okay, now you're going to take electrical engineering classes that are digital hardware classes. And you're going to take computer science classes so that you become kind of this hardware, low-level programming person. Okay? And that degree, na you know, nationwide, basically popped out in the 90s. All right? And that was a workforce demand type thing. At the same time, 1970 and onward, the computer science profession and degree kind of blossomed into what it is today, which is they are writing software that is executed by this digital hardware. But in order for the software to become more and more sophisticated, it had to be what we call abstracted from the hardware. Because a computer engineer, I mean, you're going to program your computer in ones and zeros. Okay? You can't write Minecraft in ones and zeros, right? I mean, it just takes too long to do that. You need to be at a higher level, maybe like C. And then what happens when C runs out, you go to like these object-oriented languages like C++, Python, Java, and you start going into this object-oriented stuff. So what computer science does is they are software developers, but they become higher and higher in the abstraction stack so that they don't necessarily worry what, exactly what's happening in the hardware. They just worry about algorithms and solving problems using computational thinking. Okay? So people come to me and say, you know, why would I get a computer engineering degree? What kind of job is anything that makes a product that looks kind of like this? You might not even work for Intel necessarily. You could. We have, we have students that every once in a while go to Intel. But basically, any company that builds a product or a thingamajig has a computer in it. And the, th the computer in the thingamajig is not going to necessarily be running Windows 10. It's going to be doing just basic tasks to make the product work. So that's where an engineer, a computer engineer would actually exist. So they would be the person that builds that digital hardware, programs the low level so that it programs the low level software so it can communicate with all the sensors. And then if you wanted to do something more sophisticated, so maybe you had an LCD on here that did something really cool, you might have a computer scientist that came on top of that and said, look, I'm going to now add some higher level at, uh, software which will allow you to do a whole lot of cool stuff. All right? So everything will eventually need a computer engineer. So does that kind of give you a context of what a computer engineer is? Well, good. Good. I'm glad we talked.